Hello everyone, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle and today is a very special day because I managed to finally, as you can see over here, hit 2500 uh, in Rapid and this has been a goal of mine for a very very long time. Um, and yeah, I, uh, before I like get into this video and you know give you guys all of the best insights I have, I wanted to give you guys a bit more info about myself if you happen to be new to the channel uh, because you know it doesn't, uh, it's not really anything to brag about this 2500 if let's say I was a GM already or maybe I was some child prodigy and uh, you know like 2500 was a piece of cake right so uh, basically I am a 1900 to 2000 my peak was 2000 FIDE uh, rated player um, I've been playing since the age of like uh, 10 I guess and I probably played the most in my life between the ages of like 14 and 15 uh, but I've basically been playing chess like, you know, the past, I, I'm 25 now, so I've been playing chess the past 15 years. Um, and yeah, I, I I mean, I guess I thought one day I would be at like this uh, hitting 2500 online kind of level. Um, and I guess today's the day, right? So I wanted to share with you like uh, all of the insights I have about it. And I actually uh, prepared for you um, uh, a slide that has all of um, uh, the different uh, uh, insights that I will be going into in this video, so I, I really don't know how long this will take, uh, but I'm going to go through each one one by one, and we're going to try and get to the bottom of it. So the very first uh, insight uh, that I want to uh, talk about is why should we even care about online ratings? Like, you know, does anyone care about online ratings, right? So basically, um, Obviously, people treat online uh, very differently. I mean, honestly, like in, in recent years, the, the amount of uh, attention and uh, focus on online chess has grown dramatically since, you know, like back in the day when I used to uh, start playing when I was like around like 12, 13 years old, chess.com uh, had pretty much just been uh, created. Uh, Lee Chess was much, much worse than chess.com at the time. And uh, there was even like ICC, which uh, I never got an account because I think I was too noob to play on it at the time. So I just started on chess.com. Um, but yeah, basically it's really blown up. It's really blown up a lot since then. And the reason why I think you should care about your online chess as a kind of metric to where you're at in terms of your chess improvement is because I think it's a lot uh, more reliable in terms of uh, seeing where you're at. And to just give like a couple examples of why like over the board chess, you know, may not suggest like your, your true strength. Uh, well, firstly, you know, you don't have free reign to play as much as you want. Like you're limited by the number of opportunities you get and whether you can fork out some money and play in some open tournament somewhere. So, you know, you've got some physical limitations. And secondly, also when it comes to actually playing like your opponents, uh, you know, your performances can fluctuate a lot. So this was actually... Uh, you know, two tournaments I played in um, uh, 2023. Um, and uh, as you can see, both of them went horrendously. I mean, uh, basically this Bristol tournament was a disaster because my head just wasn't uh, in the game at all. And I wasn't really uh, thinking in a positive chess mindset. And I really didn't care about the chess. And uh, I made some horrific blunders from winning positions. And okay, of course, this is all part of chess. And, uh, you know, I'm not... Uh, saying like I deserve to win these games or something, but basically I was definitely playing under my, my true strength. And then in Menorca, uh, I played this tournament where um, out of my eight opponents, the ninth round I had to leave um, because I had to catch a flight. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I basically played six out of eight underrated juniors. And the two adults that I played, uh, I actually became better friends with uh, Azia. Uh, if he's watching, so shout out to Azir. But um, yeah, I managed to score one and a half against the adults and uh, struggle more against the juniors. Um, so yeah, a very, very tough tournament. And obviously I took a massive hit, like minus 70. Uh, but then two years before that, when I was definitely a worse player, uh, I gained 40 points uh, in the Bruges Masters and I and I beat uh, one FM, 2150. Uh, Hannah Gusens, who's like the best Belgium female uh, he's 2120, and I think now she's like 2200 something. She was 22 something as well at the time as well. Um, I mean, I beat another uh, 2140. So, you know, basically, when it comes to over the board chess, um, that's a whole different story, and I can, I guess, discuss my insights there another day. Probably, 
uh, I will only make that video if I actually make it to a title or something because I don't really feel qualified otherwise to uh, give advice on the matter. But yeah, my point is that compared to online chess, where you can really play as many games as you want, um, and you're kind of playing this like average opponent, right? You're, you're not playing all juniors, you're not getting unlucky where you play in a tournament where you know, 90% of your opponents are from Kazakhstan, India, China, and Mongolia. Like, you know, you can basically make your life harder or easier in over the board chess, but in online chess, it's kind of more, more balanced. So this is my long answer to why, like, I think um, using online chess to kind of understand, like, your progress and your strength as a player, I think this is a really nice, a nice metric. And it's a nice goal to work towards as well when you have a specific rating uh, that um, you want to try and achieve. So that's the first thing. So let's go back to our list and see uh, what's next. So the second point I want to uh, now advocate for is it's absolutely essential uh, that if you are a serious player and is caring about that online chess, chess, you must get an alt account. Alt account. So what I mean by this is, um, you know what? I'll just I'll just share it with you guys because it's I, I've <laughs> I've got um, uh, I don't really use this anymore as like uh, like a serious um uh like prep work or anything anymore um it's a bit outdated but as you can see i, I have this alt account right uh ponziani ghost and basically as you can see my ratings on ponziani ghost are significantly lower than on my main and the reason why is because well there are two reasons why you might want an alt account first reason is more for the tournament over the board player which is having a secret account where you can play your actual preparation and actual openings where you don't want anyone to find out about what openings you might be playing. This could be a really good reason why you have a secret alt account that no one knows. And the second reason um, is when you are trying to grind rating and grind progress on your main account, um, it's very, very useful to be able to play warm-up games and play chess on an alt account where you really don't give a crap about the rating. So, for instance, uh, my bullet has gone up and down. Actually, like, uh, my bullet has uh, reached uh, a peak of 25.19, so actually higher than I ever achieved on my main. Uh, for the record, I'm not touching uh, my 2500, at least until, like, you know, I've really established myself as a player, if I establish myself as uh, a strong player like Fide Master or something above then I and I think I can really make the push but yeah it, it's really not in my interest to 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 play any more bullet now that I've hit that 2500 and even rapid right like I've, I, I'll tell you my plans later but point is having an alt account is very very useful because it means on days where you're not feeling uh, you know the chess um, like you're not at your peak strength then you can go to your alt account so I'm going to elaborate this uh, on this in just a second so Basically, um, that, that brings me on to my third point, which is uh, I found that a really, really nice way to, uh, you know, make progress on your account is to ask yourself one simple question before playing. And that is, do you think it is more or less likely that you will gain rating today? If you look at yourself and you're really honest with yourself and you say, you know what, actually, Michael, you're quite tired. You know, you've just been to the chess club. You've, you've had a pint of beer. Are you really in the best shape to to like be grinding to 2500? Okay, maybe not. So in that case, if you're really really feeling like playing chess, you can play on your alt account, and you won't and you'll feel much better because you'll probably like do average. Maybe you'll gain, maybe you'll lose. But the point is, you've made that call, and you can you know play some chess and let off some steam, but you're not affecting your your actual rating. So in some ways, like yeah, this this alt account like. Um, I mean, in the past, I know that, uh, like, Lee Chess used to have a policy, like, you know, multi-accounting, you're not allowed multiple accounts. But I know nowadays, like, you know, every strong player gets given, like, one uh, account for their title and uh, one account that's a secret account, right? Uh, like with chess.com. So it, it's, it's, common, it's common practice nowadays to have uh, two accounts and basically uh, have one either uh, in secret for training certain openings and for the reasons I gave, and one main account, right? So I think having these two accounts uh, and uh, asking yourself and checking in with yourself positive or negative day, this is uh, very, very useful. Um, now, the next thing I want to get to is actually this point number four, 
which I'm calling calling uh, Caius's damage control method. Now, Caius never. Uh, so for for anyone who's new to the channel, uh, you you'll probably have heard that I've mentioned in the past uh, this uh, kid, a uh, 13 year old neighbor of mine called Caius, who um, his peak ratings online are 2700, and he's a very strong up and coming player. Um, and he basically enlightened me uh, with something he worked out with um, basically mitigating uh, uh, losses uh, online. And it was very, very simple. And out of all of the different methods that I've tried to do to kind of uh, maximize like my growth and minimize any tilts, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the best one. So um, I found that, uh, so, so let, let me explain. So basically, um, I, and I really try and follow this as religiously as possible because it really has positive effects on the long term. But it goes like this. So when you are playing, whatever starting rating you are, let's say, let's use this example, right? Let's say uh, I'm a 2430 bullet player and I was caring about improving my bullet rating. Uh, when you have this situation, um, you will play, you're, you know, you're feeling it's a positive day today and you're going to play. And when you gain up to 25 points, you stop. Even if you're on a roll, even if you think you can gain 50, you stop. Because chances are, the reasons for you getting that plus 25, maybe, okay, it's like, um, you know, you are in really good form this day, but chances are, you probably have a bit of luck. Maybe you happen to play all the opponents that, uh, um, you know, like happen to play opening lines that you liked, or maybe there are some disconnections or something, and somehow, uh, one way or another, you've, you've gotten to this plus 25. And I think in reality, the chances of you dropping 25 is as equal as you gaining another 25. And that's why you shouldn't be greedy. You should take the 25 and be happy. So you gain 25 points, you stop. Now on the flip side, if you get minus 25 in a session, so let's say I'm starting at 24.30 and I go down uh, to 24.10 or 15, right? Like whatever, <laughs> 32 minus 25 is 7. Okay, uh, math is not my strong suit right now. Um, but yeah, basically if you get minus 25, you will stop. If you get, like, you, you know, you, you lose that final game, you get like minus 27 points or something, you stop. And the reason why you have to stop is because you are making sure that you don't lose any more points than 25. Like 25 is the absolute worst case scenario for your chess. And this can also help because you know that there's this kind of like limit. As soon as you hit that 25 button, you have to stop. So when you're already on like a negative tilt and you're getting down to minus 10, minus 15 when you play, suddenly something inside of you is like, okay, no, I need to play better. Otherwise I'm gonna hit that minus 25 and as a punishment, I'm not allowed to play on. So this psychology really helps you then like get back into focus and back into playing well. And uh, this is the final point. And this is really, really, really useful. And this is something I struggled with for many, many years, which is if you realize you're having a minus day. So let's say maybe you won the first one, you lost the next two, you won the next one, you lost the next two. So you're on like minus 10 from your starting point, right? In that situation, you need to realize that you're having a minus day. And as a result, you must regain, you must try your absolute hardest to keep playing and regain until you reach the positive. And as soon as you reach the positive, you stop immediately. Whether it's plus one, plus two, plus three, doesn't matter. As soon as you've reached that positive, you are not allowed to play anymore. You have done your job, you've got back, you've stopped the tilt, you've managed to get back to break even maybe even a little bit higher, so even a tiny bit of progress, and you stop. So, the reason for doing this is because um, the idea is that hopefully, you will be able to more often than not have really good days where you're positive, either plus 25 or maybe you even get to plus 15 and you feel like you're, you're happy with that progress and you just stop for the day. So you get like big positive runs, or you get neutral runs, where you even gain a tiny bit, but that's kind of uh, negligible, it doesn't really matter. But the, oh, but the main thing is that you've stopped when you've broken even, right? Because it's very easy, what I used to do a lot, I would, you know, play some games, go on a massive tilt, minus like 20, 30, 40, manage to gain it all the way back and get back to even, and then think, oh, 
I've just won like the last seven games in a row. I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to gain another 50. I'm going to become 2600, you know, something stupid. And then, of course, I lose the next like five games. And all of that comeback has been for nothing. Right? And I actually end on a big negative and my overall progress goes down and next time I play I have to pick up the pieces again and the progress is very slow. So I think of all of the tips, like this, this like Kaius damage control is absolutely incredible. I don't know how this smart boy worked it out, but yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty clever with these things. So yeah, he worked this out. Uh, this is uh, I, full credit to Kaius for, for this method. I've been using this in the last like six months or so, and yeah, I've seen absolute positive gains uh, on all my all my ratings that I've tried to take seriously. So yeah, I think this this is really huge, and credit credit to him for working this out. Um, the next thing I want to discuss is opening considerations. So basically, um, just to give you a little story, uh, when I was playing. Um, uh, uh, when I was tr focusing on my bullet, right? So I, I used to be a big, big bullet addict and bullet used to be my favorite time control uh, to play online. Like I was kind of like a over the board player and I'd enjoy playing bullet. And basically um, I managed to reach uh, back, when was this? This was uh, March, 2023. So almost a whole year ago, I managed to reach 2,500 bullet for the first time and this honestly at the time was such an achievement for me because I think uh, until the 16th of March, like yeah, the, the 13th of March I was down at 24, uh, 25 and I think around that time it was like the first time I'd even reached 2450. Uh, 2450. So to get to 2500 and make that final 50 points was just insane and at the time, like my openings, I was playing like Sicilian a lot and my bullet games I was playing Sicilian. now. To play bullet Sicilian is like so so hard because you know you're having to think so much about the opening because you know Sicilian's such a sharp opening one wrong move and you're suddenly lost so you can't really play on automatic at all so to be able to play Sicilian in bullet this is like much much harder than playing like a system opening uh, in bullet so uh, that's the thing and I I'll come back to this March the 23rd uh, March 2023 date um, and how I got to 2500 bullet because this was a time where I got to 2500 but in the most unhealthy way possible whereas you know my recent 2500 in rapid uh, was much much more healthy um, so we're going to discuss the differences very soon um, but yeah basically uh, yeah this uh, opening considerations if you look at like my, my recent games that, that got me to 2500 rapid uh, you can see that um, so, so I lost, uh, I lost uh, at 24.98, we're going to come back to this in a second. And then this morning I was basically very determined I needed to win two games. And you know, I've been playing the Modern, I've been playing 1c3, uh, I've been playing my Benoni, my beloved Benoni. And as you can see, I've been choosing like very like kind of obscure openings, not dubious openings, just slightly offbeat and maybe not, uh, you know, number one choice of a GM, but still very playable and still very um, nuanced and, you know, with many options to outplay your opponent. So uh, I've been playing like this alternative kind of repertoire uh, on my main account, um, uh, you know, pushing for this 2500 goal. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really, really worked out. So I think uh, with opening considerations, uh, so a few things to summarize there. Firstly, you need to understand what time control you're playing. So if you're playing bullet, uh, really, you know, playing Sicilian is not the most effective uh, solution. Um, and whatever time control you choose, uh, I would say it's very, very important to look within yourself and understand what style of player you are and where you're going to get the most uh, kind of advantage over your opponents. As you can see, all of my last games, 70 moves, 48 moves, 54 moves. Okay, this one I won in 12. Uh, because uh, my opponent uh, didn't know the opening and that's another nice thing of knowing obscure openings you can get like uh, opening advantages really easily um, so most of my games are kind of long grinds and as you can see like what a, what a beautiful finished position to reach uh, to get um, 2500 right I look at all of these pawns on light squares I've given my opponent a bad bishop I'm a pawn up and yeah I flagged my opponent uh, and I have absolutely no shame in in doing this so yeah, basically understand what kind of openings uh, um, meet your strengths and also understand which openings are suitable for the time control you're trying to grind. 
So, uh, yeah, I think opening choice is very, very important. And then uh, comes calculation training. So, uh, basically, the last 21 days, uh, if you haven't been following uh, this channel at all, I've been streaming every day, and I made a little fun challenge for myself, uh, which was I'm going to stream as many minutes as I have subscribers in seconds. So, to, to make that clear, I've got like 2,300 uh, subscribers on YouTube, so 2,300 seconds equates to 38 minutes. So I've been basically doing as many minutes training as I have subscribers, and as the subscribers go, uh, I will I will train more each day. And basically, I've been focusing on all of this training on uh, my calculation and my tactics, because this is an area which I recognized was kind of a weakness. So when you are actively training, and especially training something as important as calculation, uh, of course your overall play is going to improve. So if you really, really want to see these gains, uh, like having like some kind of like practice of, you know, the essentials, uh, especially with like online chess where it's like shorter time controls, like your tactics and calculation is probably like one of the biggest aspects to winning and losing a game. So it's, it's very, very important that uh, yeah, this this area of your chess is on point, and for me, it's all it's, it's definitely like a weakness. Like my my understanding and strategy is probably, you know, twenty two hundred. Like realistically, uh, but yeah, re you know, realistically, I'm I'm what like nineteen thirty five. So you know, it uh, you know, you need you need a lot of um, you can't just have a few strong suits. You need everything to be strong, right? So yeah, practicing. Uh, calculation and tactics is is good, and if you're asking like how do I train calculation, how do I train tactics? Like uh, I've made I've made a video recently, actually two videos on this topic: how to actually improve your chess calculation and how to, and what books uh, I would recommend for doing this uh, for different levels. So uh, I'd recommend watching these if you're if you're uh, questioning questioning this, but I, I would definitely recommend this. Um, and then we come to uh, uh, focusing on one rating group, and this is very very important. So. When you actually try and grind uh, improvement uh, with your with your ratings, it's very important that okay, you're welcome to play multiple ratings at the same time. For instance, recently I've been playing both rapid and playing blitz, but I've been mainly foc focusing on rapid. Like this is the rating that I was closest to 2,500. This is the one that I was really pushing for, and that's where I'm really following through with everything I've said above. So. All of these, all of these points that I've been making, like you know about the Kaya's damage control and the positive negative day, this is all for my focus group that I'm trying to reach 2,500 in. So I'm really, really, really focused on this one group. And uh, yeah, am I going to make a separate point or did I say it here? Okay, yeah. So so actually, this is where I want to introduce this. So it's very important that if let's say your focus group is rapid, and you're playing 10-0, so with no increment. Um, then it's a very, very good idea to play on uh, your alt account a shorter time control to warm yourself up for your main time control. So if you are trying to play rapid, then what I was doing a lot, I was playing a lot of uh, bullet on Ponziani Ghost, not really caring if I win or lose, but you know, once I've won like three in a row and I'm feeling good about myself and I'm feeling fast and feeling sharp, I would then switch to my main account and play some 5-0 blitz. And after getting some good results in 5-0 blitz, then I would play my rapid. So you can see that I've you know, sharpen myself up, I've gained my confidence, I'm also playing, you know, a decent chunk faster than what I would typically play for a 10-0, and that speed is very, very useful, and that's that's actually another thing I'm going to come to in a second, but yeah, the point is that, um, yeah, with uh, focusing on one rating group, um, you should try and, like, warm up for it as well, so even if your head's in the right place about it, make sure you warm up for this time control so that you're really, like, playing as best as you can for this time control as possible. Um, and yeah, on, on that kind of similar note, uh, the next point, finding your best time control slash playing environment. Uh, this is extremely, extremely important as well. So uh, for me, um, actually uh, with, with best time control, uh, I'm a traditional player, like you know how I said at the start of the video, at like 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, I played for most of my chess and back then we didn't really play with increment. So a lot of my like foundations are playing without increment and I gained a lot of practical skills there. And I found that still, even after all these years, probably my best chess is uh, without increment. I'm just better at managing my time. Uh, I don't let my clock go as low as when I'm on increment. With increment, I have serious time trouble issues. Um, so without increment, I'm better at managing my time. And also I'm a very, very good flagger. 
I'm very good at being practical about what positions to get into when I have a time advantage and I can grind my opponent down on the clock. And this is like an aspect of my skill that probably I would say I'm 2600 at, like online, like rating wise. So I recognize this as a skill and I want to uh, push for it. So that's why with Bullet I was playing 1-0. With Blitz I was playing 5-0. Recently I used to play more 3-0. Uh, and then Rapid, I've been playing 10-0. Um, but if you are someone, let's say, who, um, you know, plays better chess and less, uh, like, you know, uh, you know, less, like, trying to win positions on time, uh, then perhaps, you know, you should avoid these time controls because you might play, play players like me who are going to flag you, right? So then it's better to play maybe, like, 10 plus 5 or maybe for Blitz 3 plus 2 or maybe for Bullet uh, 2 plus 1, right? So... Really understand your strengths and weaknesses as a player and make sure you choose the right time control for you because ultimately, you know, a blitz rating of 2430 is a blitz rating of 2430. Whether you get it in 3 plus 2, whether you get it in 3 0, whether you get it in 5 0, it doesn't matter. This is blitz. This is a worthy rating, right? So um, I'd really like experiment a bit and find out what's best for you and then uh, try and main that time control and, and get really good at it. So for instance, 10 0, like I feel like I'm super, super strong at 10 0 uh, right now, like just from all this practice. Um, so that's the first thing. And the second thing I mentioned was uh, playing conditions, right? And what I really mean by that is two things. So one is actually working out, uh, do you play best with like a mouse or do you play best like using your phone? Um, and actually I found for me, there were times uh, when, when I think like uh, maybe in like 2022 or 2023, like I would have some like peaks in like uh, in, in rating. And often these peaks were coming from when I was playing on my phone. And it was really surprising because I was like, how am I faster on my phone than on, on the mouse? And I'm, I'm not. But the reason why I was so good on my phone is because the screen is so small on, on a phone. Like I could kind of see the whole board really easily. And that means I was like not missing tactics as much. It sounds stupid, but I think this was like one of the main reasons. Um, so I was just very good at playing on my phone. But what I found out like after many years of like understanding, I found that actually I would tilt much harder and much faster playing on my phone than I would playing with a mouse. So even if I had some short-term gains of playing on my phone, overall, long-term, I was much, much better on my laptop with, with a mouse. And never touchpad, like it never, never was one of these these crazy people that got really good with touchpad. I know David Howell was one of these, one of these guys who'd only played exclusively online chess with touchpad. Um, yeah, I've got a friend who plays like, uh, like one of, crazy crazy good League of Legends player who also like did most of his career on touchpad which is insane so yeah basically find out what um, you know uh, what platform of chess you're, you're best at in terms of like like device you use um, and also think about the playing condition as well like do you like to play in the morning do you like to play in the night do you like to play after a meal do you like to play like when do you like to play right like try and work out when is your ideal conditions and for me I found that Probably I was playing best when I didn't have like some kind of deadline. So for instance, I would always play very, very bad if I was, let's say, trying to squeeze in two games before a chess lesson. Like this is a terrible idea because let's say you play those two games. Let's say uh, you win one, lose one, and you end on a negative. Well, then you've ended on a negative and you've got to remember Kai's rule, right? We don't end on negatives. We regain to positive and then we stop. So, you know, if you don't have the time limit to fulfill your actual ambitions with playing, then you're not gonna, you know, be so successful with it. So I found that always like basically just choosing days when you know that, okay, I've got a few hours, I've got no commitments, my mind is clear, I'm just gonna enjoy, I'm just gonna play some chess. These are kind of the best days to play chess. And it comes back to our very second point, right? Like when you get to playing the game, you need to ask yourself, sorry, third point, positive or negative day? So. If you are like, you know, trying to squeeze in two games before your uh, chess lesson or whatever work commitment you have, uh, ask yourself, is this going to more likely be positive or more likely be negative? Okay, this is going to be negative. I'll just play a couple games on my alt to relax and then I will go back to playing on my main. So this is um, very important as well. Um, and then uh, number nine uh, is actually music, which I created a whole separate video about. Um, but in general, uh, music is, is very, very uh, useful in terms of getting you completely in the zone and completely focused. And it's kind of a shame that, you know, you can't listen to music while playing chess uh, because, of course, this would be a breach of fair play violations, uh, like, you know, in a, in a real tournament. 
Funny enough though, I actually played a rapid play when I was like 14, 15 and there was a guy on the board next to me who actually had earbuds in and he was listening to music and everyone felt super uncomfortable about it but no one said anything, I think. Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad, right? But I, I, I think he was just a very like innocent, sweethearted like <laughs> guy who just didn't really know that it wasn't against the rules. I don't really know. I don't really know. But um yeah, like music can really help get in the zone. So actually, to tell you guys about my recent, uh, recent rapid, basically, um, I was at uh, 24-84, and I lost the first game in the most ridiculous way. Like, I was, I was so upset by losing that first game because it was a position I should never lose. And then I gained, uh, I drew one game, so I lost one, I drew one, and then I won the next four. So I, I literally got all the way up to 24-98, and I played one more game. I had to find out if today, if that day was the day, and I lost, and I ended on 2490. Now, for the record, uh, this uh, ending on 2490 was a huge, huge improvement to, uh, let's say, go back. Uh, okay, let's see if I can find this. Uh, oh no, I've messed this up. I want to look back at uh, when I had this big tilt. Uh, okay, it doesn't look that big on 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 this graph, but yeah, I basically went from 2492 to 2450. And what ended up happening there was I got to 2498, uh, I lost the game, I got really upset, I tilted all the way down, and this was before, right? This was before I uh, had this uh, Caius uh, um, uh, damage control. So actually, yeah, this is already only in like 11th of December, so actually I've only been using Caius dam damage control for like two months, three months, and already like this has made huge, huge gains. So I completely like an idiot uh, tilted 40 points, which was completely unnecessary, and then I quit on a low, which is just stupid, right? Um, so basically, uh, my recent 2498 down to 2490, then I stopped, and then the next time I played, I made it to 2500, right? So this is a much better improvement, but to finish the point on music, I wanted to just share with you uh, what I was listening to. So one of the songs I was listening to uh, was this song uh, by one of my favorite bands, HMLTD. Uh, and if Nico is watching this video, shout out to Nico, who is the bass player. He's also a chess player, a uh, very good chess player. Um, and their band released this song, and this song is an absolutely amazing song. And even though it's very, like, non-chess-like uh, in terms of, like, for, for grinding chess, I really liked the song, and I just had this, I, like, queued, I don't know, 20, uh, you know, songs of this, of this song just on loop, and it would just go on and on and on and play, play the same song over and over, and this got me really in the zone, and this got me to 2498. I was like super in the zone. But uh, today, the, the song uh, I actually listened to, um, no, not Arunian Dance, it was again Nujabis, um, but uh, what, what is it called? Uh, um, I think it's, I think, yeah, Child's Attraction, I think is, is, is the name. And uh, you should listen to this. It's like, it's really sick. Yeah, this sacred rhythm vamp mix. Like, it's a bit slow at the start, so I was constantly playing the, the song between, like, uh, 5 minutes and, and 15 minutes, where it's, like, super, super good. And, uh, yeah, like, this was just the vibe to, like, get me in the zone, and I, and I won my two games today and made it to 2500. So I really have music to thank a lot um, for, for this kind of uh, effect it can have on focus, right? And you need to be focused if you want to make these goals. So that brings me, then, on to my final, final point. And if you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned how uh, a year ago I reached my first ever 2500 milestone, which was in Bullet. Um, and I want to talk a bit more about that. So basically, uh, I call this final point uh, third time lucky. And uh, basically, um, you can see back, back here in 2023, uh, I had this day where I really, I had like a couple days where I had absolutely no commitments, like literally none, which is very rare for me. And I was like, you know what, this weekend, I'm going to make it to 2,500. Uh, I, I don't care how, uh, I'm going to do it. And you know what, like, I was grinding this, I don't know how many games I played. I must have played like 100, 150, 200 games of Bullet or something. But I literally spent the whole day playing Bullet. I think I played like maybe 9, 10 hours or something. In this whole period, I didn't eat, I didn't drink. I didn't do anything. And by the end of it, like I literally looked in the mirror, I literally looked like I'd been like some drug addict for the last 10 years. And I literally, I literally thought like when I, I made it, right? I, I was like, you know, I'm not gonna, like after this moment, after this moment of reaching 2,500, I couldn't play online chess for like a few, like a, a solid week, right? 
uh, because I was so dead from that experience of like playing like nine hours straight, grinding so hard to get to that 2500. Um, I literally went to bed that night thinking I might actually die in my sleep. Like that's literally how like obsessed and how much I grinded to get to that 2500. And I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. So um, regarding the third time lucky, I actually during this like, I don't know, 200 game marathon where I just like really, really, really wanted to get to that 2500. Um, I, uh, I got to like 2497, 2499, uh, twice, right? Before the third time, finally reaching 2500. And, um, yeah, I, I found that like, uh, yeah, with all of these goals, whatever the goal might be, whether it's 2500 online, whether it's, let's say 2300 Fide Master in person, you are probably, if you're a, like a regular human being that isn't like super lucky or something, uh, you're probably going to get very close to that goal, feel the pressure, and tilt. I think it's just very human and very natural. And what I found is that for Bullet, this, this first time, it took three attempts of getting super close to 2500 to finally getting above 2500. And um, for my Rapid as well, I got to 2498 as you saw like, um, like three months ago, and then I tilted right down. And then yesterday I got up to 2498, uh, or the day before yesterday I got to 2498, and then I tilted down a little bit, and then finally on the third time, I made it to 2,500. So you basically, every time you're like on that final game before reaching your goal, obviously nerves are going to hit you, right? You're going to be a complete wreck in terms of nerves. But every time you practice this like final clutch game, you get slightly better at handling the nerves and dealing with making sure you win that final game. So I think it just does take time as well. Like, you know, like these goals, uh, you'll come very close, you will feel like you are this, this level already, and you won't make it. And it's really about just experience and time and practice of this kind of final clutch uh, moment in order to push you push you past that uh, threshold. Um, and for the record, actually, I, I didn't really mention this in my, in my top 10 tips, but you can see I just kept my 2500 chilling. And as you can see, during 2023, you can see my blitz down at 2260, right? I'm currently at 2430. And I genuinely think like all of the tips I've said above have really made that difference in 200 points, right? But to be honest, back here, I really wasn't a 2500 bullet player. I just had that insane day where I pushed for 2500. I made it. I mean, respect to me, right? To, to actually manage that. Um, but yeah, I kept my 2500. I wasn't interested in playing. And it was only on a really, really bad day on August the 3rd. Um, I was playing a bullet marathon on an alt account. I uh, ended up getting the little marathon symbol, so that was cool. But on this day, um, I had just beaten three or four 2550 to 2600s in a row. And as a result, I was feeling so good about my bullet skills. I was like, you know what, Michael, we can do this. We're going to play some bullet on my main, right? Now, this is a huge risk. You know what? I'd even written, I don't know if I want to find this right now. Uh, you know what? I'm going to find that. I'm going to find it right now. One sec, one sec. Hey guys. So basically, uh, I've got my notebook here, which, um, you know, I keep my calendar, but I also write some thoughts in the back. And I'm just reading over like uh, this letter uh, I wrote to myself on this very cursed day of March the 15th, 2023, when I really uh, <laughs> sold my soul uh, in order to get to 2500 back then. Um, and I'm actually reading the details now, and actually it was 15 hours straight that I played, 450 games, I didn't eat all day. Um, and yeah, I looked absolutely deranged by the end of it. Uh, and yeah, how I got really close twice, uh, getting 2497, 2499, uh, and even going all the way back down to 2450, right? So I really didn't have any control over like managing my losses, I just kind of like kept playing until you know, I can finally stop, right? So yeah, this was this was actually crazy. Um, and oh, one more tip that I'm actually seeing here, which I f completely forgot to mention, is that uh, you should make sure when, when you play, like when you create a game, you, you decide like what, what uh, rating to choose. So generally, for instance, when I play Blitz, I do minus 50 plus 100. That's like my kind of sweet spot for Blitz. And then for Rapid, because, you know, like uh, with, with my Rapid rating, right, I was like, uh, with 2500, I'm top 300 in the world. It means like it's really, really, really difficult to start beating players of above uh, 2500. So for for my final like 
uh, push towards 2500, I set my rating requirements to minus 50 or minus 100. Um, and, and I found that, you know, like sometimes I'd play a 2350 who was stronger than the 2450. So it just didn't feel like uh, like worthwhile to play um, such a weaker opponent if they're not actually that weaker in strength, right? So uh, it, that's another very important consideration to actually think about what... Um, uh, like what what rating range you want to have your opponent. So this is important. But yeah, just just reading this reading this is actually crazy. And I wrote this whole letter to myself, basically saying, you know, please do not play on your twenty five hundred rating because don't forget the sacrifice it took to reach that rating. Now, stupid me, like I don't know how many months. So between fifteenth of March twenty twenty three and August the fifth. So it'd been like maybe like four three months or something, three months since having this 2500 rating, I had this um, bullet marathon, right, that I was telling you about. And actually, I'd stopped playing bullet entirely for this whole period until the marathon, got the jitters to play more bullet. And again, this was before I was playing bullet on my ult. So yeah, again, like I reached this 2500 in a super unhealthy way. I then proceeded to play online chess in a super unhealthy way. And when it got to August the 4th, I then had, as I said, had just beaten uh, three or four really strong bullet players in a row, and I felt I can actually push my 2500 bullet higher. I went from 2500 to 2437 in one go, quit for a bit, tried to regain it, went down to 2387, went down to 2376, went down to 2347. So literally down 150 points. Now, this is very natural, right? If you you know, have been playing a lot of bullets, you get to 2500 bullets, you haven't played a single bullet game for 3-4 months, no matter how well you're doing in a bullet marathon, you don't suddenly uh, think that you're gonna suddenly gain more, like it's crazy, it's crazy. So, um, I mean back then as well, like, you know, as I was saying, right, I was playing a Sicilian as black, like I wasn't really thinking so smart about my opening choices, I wasn't doing any of this uh, list that I've come up with for you guys. Um, so of course things went completely horrendous and it took me a whole entire month to actually get back. It literally took from the 4th of August all the way to the 31st of August to finally get to 2500. Now the funny thing is that on my alt account I am very regularly above 2500. So uh, it's no longer such a big deal for me to get to 2500. But having said that I am not touching 2500 on my main account ever again. Like as I said, unless I reach like FM or IM or something and I really prove to myself that I'm much, much stronger than this and I can play, uh, I'm not going to be in the headspace to um, gain, let alone maintain it. Because, I mean, for me to get to 2500, it's like, as a player, I can lose to like a 2400, right? It's not like super easy to beat every 2400. So the fact that I can still lose to weaker opponents, it means like, let's say, pushing to 2600 is going to be insane. So... I think as soon as I reach like, you know, these goals uh, one by one, right? I've done the bullet 2500, I've done rapid 2500. Hopefully, if I can manage blitz 2500, I'll probably be in, be in some kind of zen state where I can leave my main account as it is. And then I can really make grinding progress on my alt account. And maybe I can push for 2600 there. But I think like, I mean, a lot of people like uh, I, in the past have criticized uh, this, this mindset of mine that like, you know, you get to a certain rating and you quit. But to me, it's kind of like uh, kind of like some timestamp or like achievement at that point in your life where you can go back to your profile and you can be like, hey, you know what? I reached that rating. I'm super proud of that. You know, when I first played chess.com, like back as a 12, 13 year old back, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, like... I, I remember the joy I got from reaching 2000 for the first time and for so many years, like, I don't know, last five years, I've been like really, really trying to get to this 2500 rating um, in online chess. Like obviously not playing every day and obviously there'll be periods where I haven't touched it in six months or whatever. Like, you know, it's not been like obsessive, but in general, this rating was always kind of like a big deal to me as like, you know, if you can get to this rating, you are an established online chess player. So, yeah, like, I think um, I do have plans to, like, kind of just leave it. I'm not going to push this rapid rating to 2600, say. Um, 
but I will definitely do it on my alt account. And yeah, then I'd also be looking to like, probably like try some chess.com if I can handle the interface, but I hate it so much. Um, it's actually unbelievable how chess.com back in like 2012, 2013 is probably still similar in terms of its like standard and interface compared to now. Whereas like Lee Chess has just improved like a billion fold. Like it's, it's unbelievable how much Lee Chess has come along in, in the same time that chess.com has gone nowhere. Um, but yeah, that's a different debate altogether. And uh, yeah, that concludes my long explanation as to how I believe you can get to 2,500, even if you are not a titled player, even if you are just a club player of 1,900 uh, FIDE. If you take all of these considerations into mind and you follow all of this religiously, especially for Kaya's damage control, then I think you will reach new rating heights. So it's really about discipline with online chess and actually all chesses, like especially over the board chess as well. It's like, for me, you know, in the last like few years when I've been playing more classical chess recently, like uh, my reasons uh, for not making any progress in terms of my uh, over the board rating is not because of strength in, in all honesty. I think it's because of discipline because I have played so many tournaments where I'm not in the right headspace, where I'm not uh, when I'm blundering in like one move due to like all kinds of reasons. And uh, yeah, there's a certain amount of discipline that is needed. If you care about it enough, you will discipline yourself to follow it and make these gains. So I think at some point I'm hopefully going to come back to over the board chess and implement all of these things that I've mentioned in uh, this video into my over the board chess as well. And uh, yeah, I look forward to that day when, when I have the time to really be able to focus on it. Because I think like, yeah, with over the board chess, you need to be even more focused and dedicated than you do for online chess, right? So uh, I won't have that time anytime soon, but maybe one day I will. And yeah, then I think like all of this experience and all of this training will, will pay off for that. But uh, yeah, this is, this is kind of like the story of how I reached uh, 2500 rapid. And I'm glad I could share my story of my, oh, was it 15 hours? Like I've already repressed like the exact amount of time it was, like 15 hours straight or something that it took me to get to 2,500 back up, back in uh, March, 2023. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is really great. And I'm very, very uh, happy that I could finally reach this uh, goal of mine that I've had for a long time. And hopefully blitz to come as well. So if we can make the travel, this will be an absolute online dream chess uh, come true. And yeah, until then, I'm going to keep training. I'm probably going to do a stream uh, shortly after I edit and upload this video. So maybe you can join me there. So thank you guys all for watching. Uh, thank you for following my journey so far. I know it's been a very topsy-turvy one. And thank you to all the Patreon supporters and YouTube members for supporting this journey as well. Cannot thank you guys enough. And if you have watched till the end, I would appreciate a like and a subscription on this video because yeah, like these, these videos, um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think, I, I think, I think they deserve it. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It's been an emotional day. It's been an emotional day. So thank you guys all for watching and I will see you in the next video or stream. Adios.